This instructional video is designed to help security managers use the CPNI Motivation Analysis Tool. There are three stages to using the tool. Collecting and entering data is just the first part of the story. How you analyze and interpret the data is vital in helping you to know how your security officers feel and knowing where to prioritize your efforts. The third part of this video will guide you to the CPNI PDF file and its suggestions for interventions. Once you have downloaded and opened the analysis tool, look for the Data Set Info tab. It is vital that you look at this tab, think about its implications for how you design your data collection, and enter the information needed for the tool to know how to analyze your data. First, you must enable the content of the tool by clicking on the Enable Macros button. If you don't, some of the features of the tool will not work. Then, you need to give your organization's name. Note that you enter your own data in the grey areas. The next field asks you to say how many people are in your sample. The tool will tell you if there is a different number between the number you say here to the number of questionnaires you have already entered. Obviously, you won't usually enter the number of people until you have finished collecting the data. The next field asks you to say where your data is held in the tool. You will see that there are two tabs called Data Entry Sheet and Pasted Data. If you want to enter data directly into the analysis tool, use the Data Entry Sheet. However, if you want to paste data in from another file, perhaps because data is being entered by several people on different computers, use the Pasted Data Sheet. Next, you are asked to say how you want to analyze your data. There are two options, by employer or by location. The data will be analyzed by whichever you choose. If you want to analyze the data both ways, you can do it first by one and then by the other. To do these analyses, you must remember to tell the tool which employers and locations are involved in the study. If you don't, several of the data analyses will not work properly. In this case, we only have one employer and two locations. Notice that you have to both tell the program the name of the employer or location and give each a code number. If you enter data using the data entry sheet, there are some things you have to remember. The analysis tool only recognizes numerical data, so all the questionnaire data has to be entered as numbers except for any comments from respondents which can be entered as text. The general rule is that you number responses on the questionnaire from left to right, starting at 1 for the furthest left response. So, for example, if the respondent has ticked the under 21 years old box, a value of 1 should be entered. If they tick the 21 to 25 years old box, a value of 2 should be entered, and so on. When you are entering data for individual questions, a strongly disagree response scores 1. Disagree a 2, and so on, up to strongly agree, which scores 5. A complete list of the codes is given in the guidance document that accompanies the analysis tool. There are some exceptions to the left to right rule. It is up to you how you use the case ID data column. Employer or location data are entered using the codes you have pre-specified on the data information tab. And the comment data field either has a zero if the respondent has written no comments or a one if they have. Apart from the case ID and the comment text data columns, all the data you enter is checked to make sure that it falls within an acceptable range. If you enter data which is out of range, the following error message will appear. Just click on retry and replace the invalid value with a valid one. Sometimes you will get questionnaires returned with bits of data missing. If you leave a data cell blank, this will result in the error message appearing. When this happens, you should replace the blank with a zero for the demographic data columns and replace it with a three 
if it is one of the question columns. Using the pasted data sheet. Instead of entering data directly into the tool, you can enter your data into one or more databases or spreadsheets and then copy and paste the data into the pasted data tab in the tool. This can be done in the normal way. When you open the pasted data tab, you will see that all the cells in the tab are orange except for the case ID and comment text columns. This shows that there are no valid values in the cells. When you paste in data, the cells turn white as long as the values are in the valid range. In this example, you can see that quite a number of cells are still orange. All the entries for employer and location are in orange cells. This is usually a sign that you have forgotten to define the employer and location fields in the data info sheet. If you fix that, the cells will turn white. You can also see that one of the cells in the gender column is orange. If you look at this cell, you will see that it is blank. And, of course, blank entries are invalid. Several of the tenure cells are also orange. In some cases, this is because they are also blank, but some of the cells have values in them. These are orange because the values are out of range. The highest allowed value for tenure is 6. All these missing and incorrect values should be replaced with zeros. There are a few question cells which are orange. In most cases, these cells are also blank, but in one case, it is because the value is outside the allowed range of 1 to 5. All these cells should be treated as missing values and replaced with a 3. When you have finished entering all your data, if you have done everything correctly, the scoring tool will automatically do all the necessary calculations and produce all the relevant tables and graphs. However, when you look at your results, there are a number of telltale signs that you have forgotten to do something. 1. If you have forgotten to define the names and codes for fields such as location and employer, the tables containing the individual item results will contain lots of columns where every data cell is coloured red, like this. You will need to look at the Dataset Info tab again and make sure you have completed the information correctly. 2. If you have forgotten to name something, for example, you haven't given your organisation a name, the graphs may appear with benchmark data, but no organisation data, like this. Again, you will need to check that you have completed the data set information correctly. 3. When you look at the graphs in the Demographic tab, you may find that there is only one data bar, which contains 100% of the data, when you are expecting several bars. This usually means that you have forgotten to code in one or more of the fields in the data set info tab. 4. One last point to watch out for is if one or more of the graphs or tables in the demographic info tab seem to contain impossible data. For example, here the table seems to be saying that your respondents made no comments, although you know that they did. This is usually because you have forgotten to say how many cases there are in your data. Analyzing the following tabs will give you a good indication of how motivated your staff are likely to be and can help you work out what areas you need to focus on in more depth. You should look at the main graph first. There are two things to look out for. Firstly, check whether your organization's scores are above or below three. This is an important cutoff. If the average score is noticeably higher than three, this indicates that a significant majority of respondents have scored the organization positively. If the average score is noticeably below three, a significant majority of respondents have scored the organization negatively. Secondly, compare your organization's scores to the benchmark data. This will help you identify how well you are doing compared to other similar organizations and to identify places you might look for examples of good practice. If your score differs from the benchmark by more than 0.2, this difference is likely to be statistically significant. You can check the difference in the table that accompanies the graph. 
To understand the causes of low components of motivation scores, you need to look more closely at item results in the Organizational Influences and Management Influences tabs. The Organizational Influences. This tab can indicate whether or not your staff feel that the work they do is well organized and that each aspect of their role is well planned and well supported by the organization. The Management Influences. This tab can highlight any weaknesses in the way managers and supervisors behave towards both individual staff members and teams. These weaknesses can reflect systematic problems in the management approaches adopted within the organization or training issues for individual managers. Before completing your interpretation of the questionnaire data, you should check the demographic data to see if it might be influencing your results. Differences in the age, gender and tenure profiles are sometimes related to different patterns of response. The Interventions Grid is where you can cross-reference the problem areas you have identified in the Analysis tabs to suggestions of interventions you might take to address these issues. For example, it gives specific advice on the steps that might be taken to improve the image of your security operations. For more information on how to set up and carry out these analyses, Download the CPNI's Guard Force Motivation document, where you will also find the scoring template and analysis tool instruction document.